Hello and welcome to another VR tutorial. In this one we're going to carry on with our VR Maker game and we're going to take a look at actually hooking up our gun so it ray casts out into the scene to see if we fit a target and then we're actually going to start playing some audio as well once you've pulled the trigger. Let's dive right in. If you're like me and love everything to do with gaming, game development and new technologies then check out my channel. I've got dozens of videos on how to create your own games and look the latest in tech. And if you like what you see, why not consider a subscription? Thanks very much and enjoy the video. Okay, so here's what we're going to be making. Wow, the gun is really close to my face. So last week we saw how we can pick up the gun and when we fired it, it vibrated, which is cool. But then this week we're going to take a look at when we fire the gun. Not only do you get audio, but we're going to look how we can raycast and hit a target and then show that feedback in our inspector. Let's get started. Let's look at how we can fire a raycast out into the scene. Open caps. So here we are in last week's scene. And as you can see, it looks a bit different for those of you that haven't watched the previous videos. This is uh, the level that's made freely available to everyone that's watching on YouTube. But for now, we're going to just jump in and use our free scene. Uh, we've got our gun here already. And this contains the gun script that we wrote last week. Uh, and this is just a very simple script that's detecting the trigger press on the controller and firing haptic feedback. And we're going to extend this so it shoots a ray cast out into the scene to determine if we've hit a target. So let's take a look at stage one, which is ray casting from the gun. Now, when we're ray casting from this gun, we want to shoot a ray from an area around our barrel or the end of the barrel that shoots a ray out into the scene um, and if that hits a target then it's going to do a particular set of actions. So we need to create that ray cast and we also need to create like an origin point of that ray cast. So where is the ray starting from? Now we could just kind of start it from like the center of our gun but that doesn't really work because it's a little bit lower than where you're aiming. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a transform just in our gun parent that is going to act as a place for our ray to start from. So go ahead and click on the gun parent. Right click and just go create empty. And we can call this raycast origin. Or something that looks quite close. And then we want to move this into position somewhere near the end of our gun barrel. Uh, and you've got these, you can use the little view controls here on the right to um, get you in a better position. You can see roughly where the middle of the nozzle is. This will make sure it's all lined up nice. There we go. So you can see that's almost dead center of our nozzle now. So that's a good place for our ray to shoot from. As you can see, the Z is pointing forward, which is good. That's the forward direction in our world, and that's the direction we're going to ray cast from. Now we've got this transform in our gun parent. We're going to go ahead and double click on our gun script and ray cast when we pull the trigger. Here we go. So this is the script that we wrote last week. Let's just zoom in a touch. Uh, and all this is doing is it's getting the XR Grab Interactable on our object, which is our gun. Uh, and then it's going to listen to the activated event, which is when we pull the trigger. And as you can see, here we've connected our ad listener up to fire the method trigger pulled. So when we pull our trigger, the trigger pulled method is called and we are giving our controller some haptics so it feels like we've actually done something like the guns vibrating when you shoot it. And we're actually going to use this trigger pulled to call another method. And we can call that one raycast into scene to determine if we fit a target. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new line and we'll just give our method a name that's called fire raycast into scene. And then you want to finish off with your yeah, two brackets and semicolon. This method doesn't exist yet, so you can put your mouse over it, hold control and full stop and hit enter on generate method. And it's going to create that method for us. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to cr create a ray cast hit variable here. And we're just going to call this hit just as you would do when um, doing a normal standard ray cast in your game. And then we want to start an if statement. And we want to say physics dot raycast. And now here we're going to need a couple of variables. We're going to need the position that we want our raycast to take place from. 
and we also need a direction to raycast out into. And we've made our origin point for our raycast in our gun. So we can go up here and create a variable, make it a serialized field again. And this time it's going to be a transform and this is going to be raycast position, let's call it. Actually, that's a bad name. Raycast origin, that makes more sense. And then back down in our raycast, in between our two brackets here, we can say raycast origin or position, where it's going to originate. Then we need to give it a direction to raycast out to. So we can say raycast origin dot transform direction. And we want to put it in the four direction, which was the, the blue blue arrow on the direction. So we want to say vector three dot forward. And we need something to store what we hit. So we're going to say out hit. And we're just going to have that ray fire into infinity for the time being. We may change. We, you can always give this a range if you don't want to hit things far away. But for now, we're just going to say mathf.infinity. And we're also going to give it a target layer to check against. So we can actually create our own. We can actually create a, a variable for this. So we can specify in the inspector what layer we want to be able to hit. So again, it'll be a serialized field. And we're going to use a layer mask. And we can say, we'll just call this the target layer. And then back down in here, we can use that variable, the target layer, to specify what layer we can hit on. And then we want to open up our curly braces. And you can see I've got a little bit, little red squiggly line at the end of it here. And that's because we're missing something. And as you can see, we've got um, quite a few brackets here. Let's just check how many we've got. We've got one here that's closing off. If you highlight it, it shows you which one it's linked to. And that's this one over here. So this bracket is closing off this statement. So we need one to close off the if. So we just need a bracket at the end and then that will squiggly line will go away. Now for the moment, just to check this is all up and running and working properly. I'm just going to do a debug to the console to see what we've hit. So we can say debug dot log, and then we can use our dollar sign because we're going to actually be placing in a variable inside the string. Open up your speech marks. I'm actually going to give this one a color in the inspector just to make it stand out a little bit more. So we can say color equal, let's say green, and we'll say hit target. And then we open up the curly brace. We want to know what we've hit, what that game object was called. And we can get that information from what we've raycast and we've hit in the out hit. So we can use that. We can say hit dot transform dot name. And then we'll just end off that color like so. And then a semicolon on the end. So now if we hit anything in our scene that's on our target layer, and we'll set up that layer in a second, we should see a debug message to say that we've hit that target. So save your script and let's jump back into Unity and set up a target. So now let's go about creating that target. And for a minute, what we're going to do is we're going to use a cube in our scene. So we'll right click, you know, 3D object and cube. And it's going to place a big cube in the scene. It doesn't need to be that big. Let's just drop that down and we'll push that right back. This is our target that we're going to be aiming for. I have to make sure it's got a collider on it. This just doesn't work. And um, there'll be nothing for the ray, car ray cast to hit. We need to make sure that this is on our target layer. So we're going to create that new layer. So with the cube selected, go to layer where it says default, click on there and go add layer. I've already created one called target because I've been testing this before teaching it to you, but you can go ahead and create your own ones as many as you like. Um, and once you've got it, just type it in and hit enter, go back to your cube and you see it won't automatically populate. So you need to drop it down and select target. So this is all set up now, ready to be shot. Let's jump back to our gun. And you can see we've got a few variables here now that we need to assign. So it, it's asking for our raycast origin, which we've set up already. That's there. So we'll go ahead and drop that in. That's where we're going to raycast from. And it's also looking for a target layer to check against when we raycast. So drop that down and select target. So now let's jump into play mode and see if this is working. We should see a debug log come up when we shoot our cube. So I'm going to grab my gun. I'm going to fire it, it's vibrating because we're firing the gun. Shouldn't see anything in the console. Good. Because we haven't hit anything with the target on it. It's ray casting. It's not hitting anything with that target layer. So as soon as I aim at the cube and pull trigger, we should see the debug message. 
which we do, good stuff, but it's not green. I, I like pretty colours. Let's make it green. Why isn't it working? Let's jump back into our script. As because we haven't finished off this statement here, look, we need a, another little arrow at the end of colour. So we can go ahead and put that in and save. This isn't important at all, but it just makes the inspector a lot, a lot better to read. It makes debug logs stand out against other ones when you start looking for a needle in a haystack sometimes. So I'm not hitting anything and then hit the cube, boom. Aiming's really bad. There we go, is it working? There we go, so hit target cube, perfect. So that's all working. So it's hitting the target and it's firing that debug message. To let us know that we've hit a target that's on the right target layer. Let's try and make our gun a little bit more exciting though. Let's add, add some audio into our gun. To do that, we're gonna add a component. We're just gonna add an audio source to our, our gun parent. Add in an audio source. I'm gonna move mine up because I like my scripts to be on the bottom. So it might just be me. So there we go, we've got my audio source there. Perfect. And we're gonna jump back into our gun script now where every time we pull the trigger, you can hear the gunfire. Double click on the gun script and it'll open it back up. So the first thing we're gonna need is a variable for our audio source. So you can put that in here, we make it a serialized field, and this is gonna be an audio source. And this is gonna be our gun audio. And then we wanna make another one, serialized field, and we want this one to be an audio clip. We'll call this one gun clip. And let's just give these better names. So we, this is the gun audio source, and we'll call this the gun clip SFX. And go ahead and save that. And then on awake, we want to grab hold of our audio source because we don't want to be using get component all the time down here when we're firing it. So on your awake method, go private, void awake. We're going to use the try get component here. You could use the get component just like you would normally. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, an if statement and then I'm going to write try get component. So it's going to try and get hold of the component that's on this object. And you want to say out and then we need to give it a type. So we're going to say audio source, if I can spell audio source. And we'll give it a temporary name of audio. Try get component is going to look on the game object that we're on. And then if it's got an audio source, it's going to store that in this temporary variable here of audio. And then it, under this, put in the two curly braces. And then we can say that the gun audio source is equal to audio, like so. So this is, if it's got it, great. It's going to assign it to our gun audio source. And if it hasn't, it's just going to carry on. So if it hasn't got an audio source, we can say that the gun audio source is going to equal this game object. And we want to add a component. We're going to add in an audio source. So we say type of an audio source. And then at the end of this, you get a red um, squiggly line. Uh, at the end, we just want to write as audio source and then semicolon finishes it off. So what happens here, if our component contains an audio source, that's gonna assign our gun audio source to the audio source assigned to the game object. And if there is no audio source on our gun, then we're gonna put one on there so that we can use it for our gunfire. So that's all we need there. So now very much the same as when we're using the haptics on our controller, we just want to create, we just want to play the audio source. So we can say here, gun fire, gun audio source, dot play one shot. And then we're going to pass it a clip we want to play. And that clip is going to be our gun SFX, gun clip SFX, we call it. Just like that. And then go ahead and save. I'm just going to space this out just for the, the sake of making it easier to read. Now let's jump back into Unity quick and we will assign some of these variables on our gun script. So the first three are all set up for us. We just need to worry about our gun audio source. We don't actually need to worry about populating that because our code does that for us. But we do have a gun clip SFX. This is the, 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 the bang when we fire the gun. So uh, I've actually found some. You can probably find one of these online called gunfire so i'm going to go ahead and drop that clip in and this well this gun clip sounds like this let's double check got the audio on 
So I think it's like a 22 revolver, just generic stock sound. So anything will do there. And then you want to drag that into your gong clip SFX. So now let's jump into play mode and see if all this is wiring up properly. So here we are in our scene, we've got a gun. And when we pull the trigger, as you can see, if you turn the audio on, you can't hear nothing. Rift audio. See if you can hear that now. Now in our scene, when we go ahead and pull the trigger, you pop in some caps, you can hear the gun audio going off, um, which is really cool, and you get a bit of haptic feedback as well. And then when you shoot the target, you get the console message in the bottom left, just telling you that we've hit that target. Let's jump back into our script quickly. Let's kind of tidy this up. So uh, we don't actually need to serialize our audio source field because our script is doing it for us. And a couple of little other things and just like housekeeping things. Um, and what I like to think is kind of good practice is to give all our variables headers and titles so we can see them better in the inspector. We have a better understanding about what they're actually doing. So we can create a header, which is kind of like a title in the inspector. Uh, and we're going to call this one the grab interactable, which that's, they should be, all your variable names should be fairly self-explanatory. Interact. It should be obvious what your variables are, but I like to give all mine sections so we know what we're looking at. I'm going to give this one a header as well. Raycasting info. There we go. And you'll see how this works in the inspector. Let's go back in and give it a second to compile. And it's just going to give each of our little sections here titles. Um, and you can get really anal about this. At least I do. It's probably OCD, but um, some, like, some of these aren't related or a bit close. Like um, I got my raycasting info here, um, which is a raycast origin and target layer. But then I got gun clip SFX. Um, so I probably want to go back into my script and move a couple of things around. So I just move my audio clip serialized fills above my um, audio source, gun audio source. And you can also use other techniques to, type, to neaten it up in the inspector. So you can also use something called space and give it a float value, let's say like 10. And then that nudges it down a little bit as well and keeps it all nice and separate. There we go. That looks weird. See how I'm getting really anal about this already. So that tidies up your script. You can also use tooltips as well. Let's say we wanted to create a tooltip for this. And we can just put a note in here about what this particular section of variables is all about. So we could say all the features required for ray casting and save that. And then when you go back into the inspector and go over the top of ray casting info, you see you get a little pop up there that says all the features requ required for ray casting. That's just some little tips and tricks for your scripts. But that's probably a good place to leave um, this lesson. Look at that. Didn't call that a very good name. Look, cube. Should have called it target. Well, that's it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it this week. We've actually done quite a lot. We now have our gun playing some audio when we shoot. We're actually ray casting now out into our scene to see if we've hit a target. And then next week, we can link that up to an interface to actually carry out some specific actions on the target once it's hit. But don't forget, this project is actually all up on Patreon. So head over there and check it out. And you can see some other stuff on there, all to do with VR as well. But that's it for this week. I'll see you in the next episode.